Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about the problem from lead code. It's a medium problem. The problem name is minimum falling path sum. So I had already made a video on minimum falling path sum too. This is the first video actually. So let's go with the problem statement. The problem statement goes like this, that you're given an N cross N array of integers matrix, like this matrix that is given to you N cross N return the minimum sum of any falling path through the matrix. Now, what is a falling path? A falling path falling actually starts at any element in the first row and chooses the element in the next row that is just directly below or diagonally left or right to it, specifically the next element in the next the row that is on the left, right, or just bottom down. And you have to somehow get the minimum sum of that falling path. So you have to start from the first, row, like first row, take every element in every rows in such a way that the next element should be in the left diagonal, right diagonal, or just bottom of the element you have just chosen. And you have to form a path like this, such that the sum of that path is the smallest one possible. That's the whole problem. Now, if you come down to the actual uh, example part, now what you can see here is that if this is the matrix that is given to you, if you start from this first block, that is this middle block in the first row, then if you just go down one step and from this, you have three options. You can either go left, right, or like uh, left, bottom, or right. So you, you, if you choose the left one, you go like this and you just add the total sum of all of these blocks. This is one of the possibilities. There can be multiple other possibilities as well. Let's say that if you start from this two block, you take this two block. Now your options to go just bottom or right, diagonal right. So let's say that if you choose this bar, like diagonal right, then you have two options, this, this, and this. So maybe you choose this. So this is one of the options also. So there can be multiple options and among all of them, you have to find out the minimum sum. So you can pause on this video, try to think how you can come up with a solution for such type of problems. Now, I generally see that when you have multiple options and matrices are there and from every path you have in the next path depends upon the previous path. What I mean by this is so for, let's say that for reaching out this block, you can reach this block from all of these three points because from this point, you can also reach this in this direction from this block. You can also reach this point and from this point, you can also reach this point. So from all of these three points, you can reach this point. And thus, like the particular answer for this block depends on the previous block. So whenever I see such type of similarity, it means that uh, it uses some sort of a dynamic programming approach. So, and also it's a matrix. So it's just simple that you just take this example. So what you, if I just tell you what you are going to do is, let's say just draw the same matrix. What you can say is that the values are two, one, three, then six, five, four, six, five, four, and seven, eight, nine. So seven, eight, nine. Let us change my pen. Now what you can see here is key that let us make one more table that will store the minimum value to get till any block. Okay. If you start from the first row, then the minimum value to get this block is two, one, and three. Because see, you will always start from the first row possible. Okay. When you start making your falling path like this, you always start from the first row, but the column will not be defined. Like you can start from this point. You can start from this. You can start from this. So it means that like for the first row, if I want to reach this block, obviously it means that I cannot go like this. I will be starting from this block only. So if I reach this block, the total sum will be one only. Okay. So one is the, so this DP table will be storing out the value to reach this block in a particular falling path. Okay. Now coming down to this row. Now, if you want to find out the minimum path to, to reach this block, what you can see is that to, if I want to reach this block, there can be one falling path like this and also a falling path like this, which actually means that maybe you are coming down like this. So two plus this block, or else you might be coming like this and you, you go like to the uh, diagonal left. So these are the two blocks because from this, you cannot go uh, from this part. You cannot go like uh, to this part. So there are only two options. So what you can see is that to reach this point, I want to find out the minimum path sum. So minimum path sum means, means that whatever is giving you the minimum plus this value. So this value is six, because if you reach this point, then you will be taking six plus the minimum of both of these values. So it is one, so it is equal to seven, which means that if you take this path, then you will be getting out minimum falling uh, sum till this block. Now coming down to this block, what you can see now, this block has three options. Either I can come from this point, this point, and this point. So whatever is the minimum, this one, the one, and also this value that is five. So the total value will be six. So five plus one, one will be coming from this point. Now for this point, it is again, like I can go to this point. So four plus one, so it is equal to five. 
fine now coming down to this block now for this block what you can observe is that i again have either coming down from this point and this point this point if i come down to this path then till this path the falling path will be seven the falling path sum will be seven and if i come somehow to this block then the falling path sum will be equal to six so obviously if i want to come to this block then i will be choosing the minimum one because if i can somehow get to this block with the minimum path sum of six then obviously i will be taking through this path and from this path i can come to this block and if i come to this block it will be six plus seven that is equal to 13 and 13 is the actual minimum path sum to reach this block actually okay now for this path as you can see that if i want to reach this block so eight plus the minimum of this six uh, like 5, 6 and 7. So it is 5. So 8, uh, 13 actually this is all 13. And for this path actually it is equal to 9 plus the minimum of this and this that is equal to 5. So it is equal to 14. So the so now it actually means that if I want to somehow reach the last row then reaching for the last row if I reach this block it is 13 sum to 13 sum and 14 sum. So obviously I just my our main target is to somehow start from, from any block in the first row and to reach any block in the last row and whatever is the minimum path sum. Now if I somehow start from the first row any block then the minimum path sum to reach the last row is if I reach this block through any path sum it will be 13 13 13. So I just want the minimum of all the elements in the last row. Because I just want to reach the last row. Whatever is the minimum value, I will choose that falling path and reach down to that block. That will be actually the least falling path sum. And the minimum will be 30. And 13 is the answer, I think so. For this, as you can see, 13. So I hope you understand that is how you are find, finding out and forming the answer. Let us go over the problem statement, actually the code part. So we will make a DP table. So DP will be like, you can initialize it according to the given N also. But you can see that the maximum considered constraint is up to 100 so you can also make it like 100 and 101 100 whatever you can take so it's just like the maximum upper bound of the values it can take that is 100 plus 1 okay so this is the so it is n cross n only i just taken n m but it is only n cross n so you can just find out one dimension only now what you can do is that for the first row you can directly just brute force it have to fill out for the first row because first row is just the same row as the table the dp table value the first row is same so you can directly just fill out the first row as you can see this this one now for the starting from the next row, what you can see here is that starting from the next row, you can start from the first index and then going over all the columns and then you can just initialize it with a very minimum value, whatever the minimum value you can get. I've initialized with this value, you can take it out with large minimum value. So because I want to minimize this, I want to initialize it with a very large number, sorry, because I want to minimize this. Okay. So uh, what I'll do here is that I will check that whether the, so if for this block, let's say I want to find out for this block, I will be checking that whether the diagonal left block on the upper row exists diagonal like upper block exists and diagonal right block exists so this is just checking that whether the upper block i minus one which means that just one row above exists if it exists i'll take out that block and find out the minimum with mini if the upper left block exists then i will be taking out that minimum and upper right block exists i will be taking out that minimum and among all of those minimum i will get the minimum value also keep in mind that I'm using the DP table. I'm using this DP table to iterate over, not the actual matrix. Okay, so that is why you will be taking on the minimum with the DP table values. And after taking that, I will be updating the mat, like this DP IJ value will be the value, like the matrix value at this point, that is four, plus the minimum I will be getting out from the, like the, from the top row, like the falling path. So mini plus the matrix value, and that is the DP value. In the end, I will get the minimum values in the last row. I will have to just find out the minimum among all the values in the last row. So you can take that also. I'm just finding out the minimum and that's the answer. So that's the overall logic and code for this minimum falling path sum. So thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you next one. I like your coding and bye.